But the American people need our Republican friends in the House of Representatives to do their job, fund the government. The odds of a Speaker Kevin McCarthy government shutdown are growing by the minute. The Senate has put forward a bipartisan bill to avoid the pain of a shutdown, funding the government until mid-November. But that bill is almost guaranteed to go nowhere in the House. McCarthy told his caucus that he wouldn't put the Senate's bill, as it stands now, on the floor. McCarthy will bring up his own right-wing short-term funding bill for a vote on Friday, which would include border security provisions and massive spending cuts to throw a bone to his MAGA holdouts. So in the meantime, we're back to square one. So what is the non-functioning half of the House of Representatives doing with just three days to figure out a plan to avert a shutdown? Well, House Republicans will hold their first Biden impeachment inquiry tomorrow, impeachment hearing tomorrow afternoon. And today they adopted an amendment from Marjorie Taylor Greene to cut Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's salary to more to no more than one dollar. Joining me now is House Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries of New York. Uh, Leader Jeffries, thank you so much for being here. I, I do want to start uh, with a, uh, that last uh, uh, element because it doesn't seem that House Republicans are taking this entirely seriously if their plan is to cut the Defense Secretary's salary to a dollar. Um, uh, is are the negotiations on the other side, in your view, serious, or at this point, is it just for show? Well, good evening, Joy. Great to be with you. And you are absolutely correct. It's just for show. These are not serious individuals, uh, but they are being led by individuals like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is driving the House of Representatives toward a government shutdown that would be reckless and hurt the American people uh, because we are wasting time doing things that have no shot of becoming law, like cutting the defense secretary's salary to $1 per year uh, and also engaging in this illegitimate impeachment inquiry when there is a bipartisan bill moving through the Senate right now that 77 senators voted to advance yesterday that would fund the government in a way that meets the needs of everyday Americans, provide support for the Ukrainian war effort, provide relief to everyday Americans who've been hit hard by extreme weather events across the country, and also doesn't include any of these extreme policy poison pill amendments like trying to undermine reproductive freedom for women. That is the only option forward. I, I want to I just go through, just so our audience understands sort of what they're proposing. I'm going to put it up on screen. A uh, million dollars in cutting low-income mothers and young kids to put them on a wait list for nutrition aid, a 70 percent cut in home heating assistance, winter is coming, 80 percent cut in funding for public schools with high concentrations of students in poverty, 33 percent cuts to housing subsidies, 60,000 seniors would lose meals on wheels. Um, and yet, um, despite the fact that if we have a shutdown, we're talking about 4 million federal employees, 850,000 workers furloughed, losing pay, military, 1.3 million active duty members continuing to work without pay, Social Security and Medicare checks would be sent out, um, but you couldn't replace your Social Security cards, et cetera. Food assistance benefits would be would be slashed by, for SNAP. Air travel, uh, TSA agents would have to work without pay. National parks, some would remain open, but maintenance would stop. I mean, you could just go on and on and on, Leader Jeffries. And yet, Speaker McCarthy is blaming Joe Biden. He's saying that Joe Biden refusing to meet with him is the reason that we might have a shutdown. What does Joe Biden meeting with Kevin McCarthy have to do with passing a, a, a spending bill? Absolutely nothing. President Joe Biden has done his job. In fact, we all did our jobs a few months ago when we resolved the reckless extreme mega Republican default crisis came to an agreement. More than 300 members of the House of Representatives supported that agreement. Strong bipartisan vote in the Senate. It came to the president's desk. President Biden signed it into law. And that agreement included uh, setting the top line spending numbers for the upcoming fiscal year. But a few days after that agreement was signed into law, the extreme MAGA Republicans in the House decided that they were going to go back on the agreement that they themselves negotiated and supported overwhelmingly on the House floor. Why? Because apparently they want to drive us toward this government shutdown or 
demand payment for an extreme ransom note, which as you've articulated, Joy, includes things like cutting and slashing funding for public education. They want to impose this continued march toward undermining reproductive freedom, criminalizing abortion care, cutting access to Social Security that would hurt millions uh, of older Americans over time, you know, do things like undermine public housing and public health and things of this nature. It's extraordinary that they want to jam their right-wing ideology down the throats of the American people. And unless we pay those ransom notes, shut down the government. Let These are ask, unserious people. Let me ask you just the, the bottom line question. You could provide the votes, the Democratic caucus, to pass that Senate bill that you're talking about. Is there a plan for the Democrats to simply provide the votes with whatever Republicans are willing to be serious and just pass the Senate bill? That is what should happen. And we are calling for an up or down vote when the Senate sends over a bipartisan continuing resolution to fund the government and meet the needs of the American people. And if that happens, we will provide a substantial number of votes, the lion's share of votes. And all we will need is a handful of so-called traditional Republicans to join with us in the best interest of the American people and avoid an extreme MAGA Republican <laughs> shutdown that will, that will hurt everyone. If And very quickly, but we're running out of time, I apologize, but if Kevin McCarthy refuses to put that bill on the floor, will a discharge petition follow? And because we know that he'll probably lose his speakership if that happens, but can you foresee doing a discharge position, petition and forcing a vote on that Senate bill? My view, Joy, all options should be on the table, and we should be able to come together in a bipartisan way to do the basic things that we're here to do, which is fund the government and meet the needs of everyday Americans. All right. We will wait to see what happens. We have three days. House Democratic Leader Hakeem Jeffries, thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate you being here. We'll be right back.